got nothing to thank God about. I tell you this, look back over your life. Every minute, you were kept by God. I remember being, I might have been eight years old or seven. I can't remember exactly. But we lived in the projects. And it was project, project. I mean, below, below. And, 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 and we were there not because of anything that my mother had done wrong. But when you're young and you have children and you don't know, you do what you know. You do all you know to do. So she did all she knew to do. And she had friends that accepted her in their home. Now, let me tell you, that home wasn't manicured lawns. That home wasn't shutters by the window. There was no screen door. There were roaches the size of my hand. I mean, roaches that you would think that's just a, a spot on the ground, but then it moves. It, it's beyond infestation. But that was my home. And I would consider that the trap house. And then for you, those of you that don't know what a trap house is, and I remember telling you the story, and Masick's mind was blown. He said, wait, Miss Tiffany, you, you grew up in a trap house? I mean, he couldn't fathom it because I don't carry that because that's not who I am. But I remember one day, the, the woman who allowed my mother to live with her, her son sold drugs. And there was a drive-by. And her son commenced to shooting back. Opened the door wide. And he's shooting. And they're shooting. And I'm on the ground like this. He's over my head. Shell casings are falling all around me. I see the flame from the guns. Because when you shoot, there is a spark. And I see the sparks coming this way. And I hear the sparks coming from above. And all I can do is lay. Frozen. Stuck. Scared. But my instinct said, get down. I didn't run. I dropped straight to the ground and got as flat as I knew to get. And God kept me. And he kept my sisters. And he kept that woman's children. Because that boy was ignorant, shooting outside the house, could have very well been shot, but he wasn't. And, and I can't really say it was a drive-by, because they stood and shot, and he shot. So it really wasn't a drive-by. No, it was a shootout. And God kept me. And I often say, God, why? So many kids get hit by stray bullets. So many kids don't make it the next day. Why me, Lord? And God said this, because I chose you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. Therefore, whatever the assignment, whenever the opportunity, I say thank you, Lord. Because that's just one moment of a millions of testimonies that I have. That's just one moment that probably lasted five minutes or felt like forever for me in the moment. But that was just one time that I'm aware of. How many times did he save us and we had no idea? How many times did he keep you and you had no idea? He was holding you. He was covering you. He was guarding you. He was keeping you. He dispatched angels and said, protect Carol. Protect Amatha. Protect Connie. Protect Larry while he's in the military. Protect him when he comes out of the military. Protect him when he's cutting grass. Protect him from rabbit and wild animals. Every moment we're protected. Never take it for granted. Never take it for granted the opportunity to say, thank you. 
God. Thank you, God, the Father. Not thank you, Jesus. Let me help you understand. Not thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, who orders. He gives the order. They do the work. He gives the order. They do the work. And Jesus really don't do the work. He's not going to do the work until it's time for him to come back. The angels do the order. They do the work. So you thank God every minute that you can because every breath is not promised. I'm going to say that again. Every breath is not promised. Every breath that you breathe is not promised. Get saved. Get delivered. Be free. Get covered and protected. Because it's necessary. It is a needful thing. He shall supply all of your need. It is a needful thing. I'm, I was going to say I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> God do what he do and he's, he move when he move. He say how he do what he do. It's him. But in the absence of Apostle Spencer, Pastor Larry, I give honor to them on today. For allowing me to bring this word. Father God, I thank you most of all. You are honored. You are honored. You are honored, God. Therefore, I honor you. I reverence you, God. None of me, Lord God, and all of you. All of you, Lord God. I'm just the mouth that you're using today in this moment. As you use all of us, God. And I thank you. Father God, let every word that I speak bring life. Let every word that I speak bring your truth, Father God. Lord God, and if I make an error, Lord God, you make the correction. God, I thank you for your knowledge, wisdom, understanding, Lord God, but most of all, your application. Give me your divine truth. Give us your divine word on what we are to do today in this day. It is in Jesus' name. It is in Jesus' name. I pray. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I, and I want to tell um, Miss Kay how much I appreciate her. I appreciate your courage and your boldness to share your testimony because it, it takes a certain strength to even open your mouth. And she shared about being the plane getting ready that can't go through this storm. And she just pretty much tap danced. Really, I could have just gave her the mic and that would have been it. But the Lord says, prepared for the storm. And this is coming from Apostles Prayer. And I'll get into that in a minute. But the scripture is Isaiah 40 and 31. And you guys can read it with me. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. A few mornings ago, Apostle prayed that God is giving all of Harvest Word Ministries an eagle's anointing. I don't know if you know it, but I'm a, I'm a, a studier. Oh, when I hear something that's like, whoa, I don't know nothing about that, let me go and I start researching. I love, love, love to research. I like digging. I like, I love that. I love finding truth. But she prayed that all of the ministries, and then she went to label each ministry that have, they, that they will have a, a, a eagle's anointing and that we will rise up and be like eagles rising above the storm. And then she kept talking and she said, God is placing an eagle anointing upon us and that eagle anointing will release us into the fourth dimension. Now, I almost got caught up in studying the fourth dimension. I did just a smidget, but, you know, he got me back together. Again, as members of Harvest Word, we must be in total agreement. Going back to what Ms. Kay said with that little baby on the plane, said, I need you to agree with me. We need to be in total agreement with our leaders as they are in agreement with God the Father. If you don't agree with them, there's no covenant. Covenant means agreement. Then if you don't agree with them, then I'm going to say it again. This might not be the place for you. Apostle going to kill me for saying that, but it might not be. If you ain't going to agree, it might be time for you to go. But anyway, 
In Psalms 91 and 10 through 12, it says, No evil will befall you. No plague will approach your tent. For he will command his angels, messenger, priests, and teachers. That's, that's our leaders. And concerning you to guard you in all your ways. And they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. And I think that's the NIV version. Again, our leaders prayed that we receive an eagle's anointing because storms are coming. Some of us are already in them. But they're coming. And more are coming. And in the natural, when a storm is coming, and we are told on the news, you know, Melissa Garner on WRAL says, there's a storm coming. And she'll say it on a on a Monday that on Thursday, it's going to be heavy wind and heavy rain, about two to three inches. So you might want to put on a raincoat and carry your umbrellas with you. And it's going to be a bit chilly. And they give you that severe weather alert that entire week, right? So she said on Monday, that storm coming Thursday, she tells you all week long, there's a severe weather alert for Thursday. And then on Thursday, you get that red bar going across your your, your, your TV screen, and it keeps going, and it keeps going, because that's to warn you of the dangers that are ahead. And I remember when I first moved down here to Zebedee, there was a, a snowstorm, not really a storm, but just enough for me to be out of school. And that's normally what I pray, Lord, please let, let the snow just be enough for me to get out of school. Well, this time I actually had to go into school, but the snow started getting heavy in Durham, and I worked in Durham at that time. And so I went to my principal, who, thank God, again, God favored me, because she was from Rocky Mount, so she kind of knew the drive that I had to do every day. And I said, I need to leave. It's snowing kind of heavy, and I don't know what it looks like on that side. I need to get to, to where my children are on that side. And she let me go. And by the time I got to Zebulon, the snow was thick enough for you to put your footprint there, but you still see snow. Like, you don't see your footprint no more, you see snow. <laughs> And I remember I didn't prepare. Now, mind you, they told me all week. But I didn't prepare for the storm. So I go to, it's now Carly C's. I think back then it was Piggly Wiggly. And I go into the store and I go to the water. I ain't no water, but one case, right? And me and this man, and I kind of felt it when he walked in. Like, you kind of feel y'all y'all about to head in the same direction. And so he's walking, and I'm walking, right? And I think he noticed that I was walking, so he kind of hopped to a little bit. So I just kind of, you know, wait a minute. <laughs> you, when, we, when we hit the corner where the water was, <laughs> he takes off. Boom! Take off and grab the water. And I said, oh, man, I miss it, God. I need you to favor me. That's exactly what I said right there in that moment. And right as I was saying that this young man came around with that big old water cart and rolled it around the aisle, I said, thank you, Lord. He told me, I almost got you, didn't I? I said, no, you didn't. You see the Lord right here? <laughs> God did that. You didn't have, you can have your water. Go, go have your water. And, you know, but in that moment, I could have got angry. I could have got mad. I could have got frustrated. But I didn't. I knew I didn't prepare. So it was my fault. It wasn't. The fault of that man, I imagine he probably didn't prepare either because we were both running for the same small thing of water. But God favored me still because in that moment, I refused to let my emotions take over. It was more of, okay, God, I, I missed it. I need you to favor me. Tell me where to go. That's what I'm thinking next. Tell me where to go. What am I supposed to do now because this water is gone and I know we're going to need it. And then, ta-da, the Lord did what he did, you know, and for me, I, I'm, I, I expect that. I expect for God, if something don't work out one way, okay, God, show me the next way, show me the next way. Now, the only thing is I can get a little impatient in the showing you the next way. So I have to tell myself, hey, bring it back, girl. Chill out. This, <laughs> chill out. If he ain't said nothing, don't move. You need to wait. But anyway, so, like I said, in the grocery stores, all the water, toilet paper, and paper towels are all gone. If we will stock up in the natural, then we got to stock up in the spirit. You have to. You got to increase your prayer time. You got to fast, study the word of God, worship, praise. And, and I put up their forgiveness. And I put up their forgiveness because forgiveness can wipe out all the other stuff. 
If you have unforgiveness, it wipes out your prayer, it wipes out your worship, it wipes out your praise. None of that no longer exists because you still have unforgiveness. And I put repentance up there because you have to forgive and then turn. Pastor Larry taught me that. You know, I'm repenting. He's like, well, you didn't, you didn't ask for forgiveness. So it's, and I was like, oh, you're right. Ask me to ask for forgiveness. Then I turn from that way. Kudos, Pastor Larry. But anyway, so he told me that. But what I want you to know is to get built up in those things so that you can have more than enough to endure that storm and not just get by. Not just enough to just skip on by. You want more than enough. And you get more than enough by prayer. You get more than enough by forgiveness, repentance, fasting, all of that. Again, okay, so the eagle's anointing will release us into the fourth dimension. The word of God declares that the fourth dimension is height. It's height. It's not... Uh, right here in front of you. It's above. And, and like I said, I almost got caught up studying it. It is not heaven. It is the fear of being that is far above the heavens. And the scripture, and that's just one of the many I was researching. 50, Psalms 57 and 11 says, Be exalted, O God, above the highest heavens. May your glory shine over all of the earth. And for those of you that are like me, it's in my opinion that that fourth dimension is the state of the I am. It is where it is the totality of the power of God. It is endless. It is limitless. It's, it's that dimension where the scientist and the theorist would say you can walk through walls type thing. You don't have any limitations. That's what the fourth dimension is. And to me... It is just God, period. That's who he is to me, beyond all of that. And so if our eagle's anointing will propel us or launch us into the fourth dimension, what is the anointing? And, and, and stay with me as I break all of this down because I'm a teacher at heart, so I want you to understand more than just, oh, that was a good word. I want you to know what you heard on today. So an anointing is the dwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer, it enables the believer to understand, apply, and administer spiritual truth. The power of the anointing is the supernatural power to carry out a purpose, call, or assignment from God, and that's known as the anointing. You know, people will say, you have such an anointing. And you're looking like, mm, okay. It's, it's what you're carrying. It's what they see because you carry it. Simply, it is the presence of the anointing that enables a believer to have a spiritual connection. Now, this part is important. Understand that the anointing enables believers or non-believers to have spiritual connections. So it's not just believers that will have spiritual connections. Non-believers will have spiritual connections as well. Understand there are many forces of spiritual connections moving about the spirit realm. Those that are of God and those that are of the enemy. And I should have put Ephesians up there, but y'all know it. Y'all know the scripture, right? Ephesians is 6 and 12, right? <laughs> I believe so. I didn't put it up there, but it explains that there are other spiritual influences. And again, spiritual influence is spiritual influence no matter the spirit. I'm going to say that again. Spiritual influence is spiritual influence no matter the spirit. So you're either going to be spiritually influenced by Satan and his demons, or you're going to be spiritually influenced by God and his angels that minister to you. So spiritual influence, again, is spiritual influence, no matter what the spirit is. Again, this is where the power of witchcraft comes from. We all need and must go through God's process of transformation and maturation. Like You have to level up. You have to increase in that area where you're lacking. And I don't know what your area of lacking is. You know that. I don't know that. I don't know if you need more time in prayer, although I think I know what Tim needs. I don't know. I'll tell him, you need to pray more. You need to. Honestly, he knows. I don't know. I know what I need. And you know what you need, where you need to level up in, where God may say, hey, mm, you pray, but you don't worship. Or you worship, but you don't praise. You don't give thanks. You don't repent. 
you know, all of those areas. Look at your life. You got to look at your own life. I can't look at your life for you. I only see the end results of what you didn't do, where you did not level up. We see that where you did not. And that's something that you don't necessarily have to say. People see. People see that on you. Again, we all need and must go through God's process of transformation and maturation so that we can be prepared to receive his anointing, to carry out a purpose, call, or assignment from God. Understand every purpose, call, or assignment comes with some sort of storm. When you level up, the storm is coming. And if you didn't overcome or deal with the storm that you're already in, it's just magnified. You know how they say, oh, this was a, a seven-point-something storm? That, that's all that's happening is you didn't overcome, so you, you stay in a storm. You stay in that uh, state of being overcome. So what's an eagle's anointing? Isaiah 40 and 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. An eagle's anointing is the instinct, strength, freedom, power, and spiritual connection within that animal. So within that bird. And, and let me just give you a few bird facts. Like I said, bear with me. The eagle's wingspan is seven to eight foot. And I almost told Tim to give me a measuring tape so you guys could physically see it. But Pastor Rick, if you could come and show me about how wide or long is seven to eight feet. From me to the chair. It's about seven to eight. Everybody see that? From me to the chair. So that means when the eagle opened up, it's going from that end to this end. Their speed is 75 to 200 miles per hour. That's how fast they fly. Their grip strength, their grip strength is a crushing 750 pounds of pressure. Yeah. So why does the word of God compare us to the eagle, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. It didn't say a crow, didn't say a raven, didn't say a dove, because they're the holy bird. It said an eagle. But they that wait upon the Lord means to expect or to bind together. You're binding to the word of God. You expect God to heal you. You expect God to deliver you. You expect God to move in your life. Shall renew their strength means to change in power, meaning to level up, to pray more, to fast more, to seek God more. You should, be, you should not be the same person you were five years ago. There should be some spiritual maturity somewhere in your life. You should say, well, five years ago I was rolling my eyes and I won't don't do nothing. Now I don't roll my eyes no more. Something has to change in you in order for you to carry that anointing that God is trying to give you, that call that he is putting on your life. Something has to change. You have to change in power. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and that means to ascend or increase. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. means your endurance or your stamina. You ever seen somebody going through? And they don't look like they're going through. Or you find out their story and you're like, wait, you went through all of that? That's because they don't look like. And I told you guys that before. I don't carry that project on me. That ain't who I am. You carry that endurance. Do eagles wait for the storm to come or do they fly above in preparation? And she talked about that plane hovering. You guys remember that? Hovering, the plane just hovering because they couldn't land. Get this, an eagle can't foresee when a storm is coming. However, the eagle takes off in the direction of the dark clouds. The eagle flies towards the storm. The eagle flies into the fiercest winds, using the storm's current to rise higher quickly. So it goes in the storm to rise higher quickly. Again, they are not concerned about thunder, lightning, hail, or getting wet, they just go. They just go. And when they get there, like I said, instead of hiding like the other birds, the eagle flies to the highest points of cliffs, and then they wait for the winds to come. So not only do I fly towards the storm, but I get there 
and I wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So I get there and I wait. The eagle instinct instinctively knows just past the storm in the high, in the high heavens, there is peace and security. It is the perfect hiding place. All the other birds don't know that. If animals know what to do, what's wrong with us? What's wrong with you? When a storm come up, you do the woe is me. I can't believe this is happening. Why me, Lord? But the word of the Lord says, you know, you will be blessed. But it's going to be with persecution. So, so why not you, right? A storm is a disturbance of normal conditions of the atmosphere, manifesting itself by winds of unusual force or direction. The pressure of the storm is used to help these birds glide without using their energy. As their wings are uniquely designed, it allows them to lock in a fixed position. What is your fixed position in God? What, what are you fixed in? Are you fixed in fasting? Are you fixed in prayer? What are you locked in? And I can tell you one, one person I know they locked in on this, Lord have mercy, Pastor Larry, on prayer. He not gonna miss prayer. He'll tell you that in a heartbeat, I'm not missing prayer. He is locked in, he is fixed on prayer. Are you fixed on prayer or your problems? Are you fixed on fasting or, or being frustrated? What are you fixed on? With all that we know about that eagle, their eight feet wingspan, 200 miles per hour speed, and the 750 pounds of strength, yet, again, when they're going through a storm, they don't use their speed or their strength. They don't use that at all. They can, and, and some of you guys, y'all can fight. Y'all look like you used to square up. You look like you used to throw them hands. So you know how, like they know how. And, and, and I love National Geographic, so this is just a side note. I saw two eagles fighting over a, a snow fox in a, you know, in a winter state. You, you know, that's where food is scarce. I'm mean, I tell you, them things went at it. They, I was looking at it like it was WWE, it was so good. But it was a mother eagle and uh, an eagle that was just in the territory, and the mother eagle had to go feed her birds. So those of you that are mothers in here, you know how it turned out. Yeah. That mama, what was interesting is the male eagle was interested in just attacking the female, right? She was interested in holding that prey. So she had one talon on that prey, and she used the other one to wrap her claws around the neck of the other bird. As she brought him down, she lifted up with this wing and the food, and he backed down there. That's instinct. That's beyond. He was looking at just the fight. If I could just beat her up, I can take the food. She said, oh, I'm going to beat you up and take this food. How many of you are like that? I'm going to fast and pray and still get my victory. I'm getting all of it. All of it. Again, like I said, yet when they're going through a storm, they don't use their speed or their strength. They don't even look down to brace themselves for the storm. You ever, somebody get ready, to, your mama get ready to hit you and you, you know, when you get a whooping, I used to brace. Ooh, child, this going to hurt, right? They don't do that. They hold their heads up. And, and it's so, I'm telling you, if you guys ever get a chance, just Google it or YouTube it, you know, birds going through a storm. They hold their heads up, they spread their wings, and they do this number. They don't even, like, flutter their feet. They just, just like that. All of it comes up at the same time, and they let the storm do the work for them. The enemy knows with us when a storm comes, we hold our heads down. We assume the worst. We never see the victory ahead. We think we're going to always be in that place. We sing the woe is me song, and we delay praying. We don't pray because we don't believe that God can do it. So what happens? The storm stays. The enemy knows this. So, hey, throw that storm over there at her. Let her kids act up at school. Oh, and let her check get cut a little bit. Mess with your, your money and your kids. That's it for y'all, some of y'all. You about ready to fight. You about ready to 
lose your mind. So then you don't pray because shh, all this going on, if he ain't helped me now, he ain't going to help me. Why would he let this happen? And, and, and I love those people. If, if God is love, why does he let someone so happen? If God is this, because he's God, period. Period. You don't, you don't tell God what to do. You don't tell God how to run what he created. I made this. God said, I made this. You hush. You hush. Do what I tell you to do. I got this. Right? When your storm comes, rise up in your spirit, man. Get in alignment with your eagle anointing and let the instincts of your spirit man manifest. And we both know that we have two worlds in us, flesh and spirit, right? And your spirit man will say, I want to fast. I want to pray. I want to worship. I want to praise. And your flesh will say, I'm tired. I don't feel like it. I prayed yesterday. I just had prayer. Like we just did threshing floor. Right? All day. I stay here all day just waiting on the Lord. Right? That's what your flesh is saying. But your spirit man say, we need to. We have to. You got to get ready. I got to get ready. We got to get ready. You got to be ready. Again, so hold your head up when you're in that storm. You stick your chest out. You open your arms and you declare, if God don't do it, then it can't be done, period. And we all know it can be done because he is God. If he decides to change our situation or not, you must know that he still can. If it hasn't changed, there's something you didn't overcome that you're supposed to get, and you will stay there until you get it. You ever have that mama where she cooks something that you don't like? And you got to sit at the table and she say, all that food better be gone before you get up. That was me. I hated food. Oh, my God. I hated that food. Just sitting. I hated the trees. Broccoli. Hated broccoli. And she would always make the trees. <laughs> Mama, can you please don't give me the trees? Please don't give me the trees. Please don't give me the trees. And she's Jamaican, so she talked real fast. Tiffany, you're going to eat the trees. Which means, Tiffany, you're going to eat the trees. And I sit there, and I sit there, and I sit there, and I sit there. And I'm trying to wait them out. Tequila, my sister, she loved food. She done ate and left. And it's trying to, like, pick around, like, hey, just throw it to me. Just throw it to me. And I want to so bad, just flick it to her. But my mama's eyes are on me. She done counted my trees, so she knows it's three trees on my plate. And I pretend to chew. Still three trees that's just chopped up on the plate because I'm trying to mash it down because I don't want to eat these trees. Trying to wait her out. There, there, there was no waiting Andrine out. You're going to sit there. It's going to be cold. And what I realized is if I just go on and knock it out, swallow the trees and be done, I'm busy in my, I don't want to. And the spikes come out. So my imagination, when I swallow, spikes will come out. Right when it's time to swallow, spikes come out. So I... Yeah, to swallow the food. And my aunt used to get so mad. Stop doing that. But it's spikes coming out of the food. Just any way that I could get out of not eating them trees. But she made me eat them anyway. And like I said, my, my flesh hated that. My spirit man said, get it over with. Eat it and be done. My sisters, cousins, all of them are eight left. They getting their dessert and rubbing it in my face with the little popsicles. And I'm still sitting there with the trees because I haven't overcome that yet. So I'm stuck right there. When you don't overcome something, you're stuck right there. Until you deal with it, you will be stuck right there. Like I was stuck at that darn table, looking at them trees, praying that, Lord, let them just disappear off my plate. Then finally, when I eat it, they tell me that wasn't so bad. I'm mad because now everybody's looking at me because I took so long to eat it. So now I'm embarrassed. I got some nerve being, I'm the one that was being rebellious. Then when I finally do it and somebody say something, I'm embarrassed about it. Get over it before you get your tail whooped. <laughs> get over it. Get over it quickly. 
when you overcome something, you get over that quickly. Get over it quickly because another storm is coming. You don't have time to wallow. You don't have time to waste. You don't have time to sit there and, oh, that was so hard. I just couldn't do it. It was just, you just don't know. Suck it up and get over it because the next storm is coming. Again, find your strength in your storm. The only way the eagle knew that the peace of God was above the storm is that he had to go through it when all hell was breaking loose. Now, those of you that are the intellectuals, you'll get that little tidbit there. You have to rise above your circumstances, your situation no matter what it is. And you have to find rest and peace in God. In knowing, like I said, that he is God. Yes, that bill came in behind two other bills. Yes, it was more than what you thought. Yes, we got a flat tire on our way to Connecticut. <laughs> flat tire, I mean, on the turnpike. Cars just... <laughs> Ain't nobody coming. Ain't nobody slowing down. And my mother-in-law calls it a Maypop. <laughs> I said, a Maypop? What's a Maypop? She said, Maypop anytime. <laughs> she got nerve to throw jokes, and we sit here with this spare tire. <laughs> but again, we just got to do what we have to do. Was that money we didn't plan on spending? No. But I thank God that we had it to spend it on the time when it was needed. So again, he shall supply all of your need. We needed that. And he supplied it again. And he will do it again. Because that's who he is again and again and again. And one more time. And he will just keep againing in your life. So that you get to see that I am God. Period. Matthews 11 and 29, 30 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light, and you will find rest for your souls is a peace of mind. You will have the peace of God when you take upon his yoke. When you realize this storm can't last forever, and if it is, I'm not learning something. So God, show me what I'm supposed to get out of this so that I can get over this. I can overcome this storm. Again, eagles use the wind of the storm. They don't fight the storm by flapping or flying up and down, trying to avoid things. Our problem is we try to fight or figure out a way out of the storm. Instead of using what God has instinctively given us, he's already given you the fruit of the Spirit. You when you receive Christ, you got that. Here, take this, you're going to need it. That's your survival kit. That's your backpack. And then you got teachers, leaders that pray for you. And give you words of encouragement or give you words of correction, Pastor Larry. That keep you in line with God. So that you can, like I said, overcome that storm. That you can rise above that storm. Anytime a disturbance or um, our normal conditions come up and we go through all kinds of changes, we don't use our instincts. We, we, don't, we don't follow what our spirit man says. And I want you guys to read this with me. Stand to your feet and read this with me. We're going to read Psalms 91. And I want you to hold your head up. And I want you to stick your chest out. And I want you to open up your arms like they wings. Uh-huh. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. 
Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth. Shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thy behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Thy shall bear thee up in their hands, lest they dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. You open your mouth. And you declare Psalms 31, uh, 91. I know y'all got it in your house and the Bible opened up everywhere, probably in every room. Say that thing. Know it. You have to know it. Yes, it is working in your house while it's open, but you give it power or a greater power or a change in power when you say it. You got to open your mouth and believe that thing. Now declare this with me. I declare and decree an eagle's anointing over my life. I will not be beat down, broke down, or defeated. I will rise above the storm. I will not allow my circumstances to dictate my future harvest, blessings, or peace. I will not allow my circumstances to dictate my future, harvest, blessings, or peace. Now pray this with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word declares as I wait on you and bind to your truth, I will have renewed strength. And I will rise as an eagle. I will run and not be weary. And walk and not faint. For you have given me the endurance to withstand every storm. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Now, if you know that you're in storms, and you haven't been using your eagle's anointing. You didn't know what it was. You didn't know what to do. Come so that I can pray with you, so that we can pray with you. Pastor Rick, ministers, please come. If you know you are finding issues with rising above, and you don't know how to let that storm fight for you, you don't know how to let those currents lift you up. Know that God has positioned people around you to strengthen you, to lift you up, to raise you above every circumstance, every situation. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You won't go crazy. You're not going crazy. You're not going crazy. You're just in a storm and need your instincts to kick in. You need your instincts to kick in. You are a child of God, and he gave you his instincts, so they need to kick in. God, I thank you 
that as they go through these storms, Lord God, you show them that you are God. You show them that you are God. You show them to hold their head up. You show them to hold their head up, but not in pride. Understand, it's not pride that the eagle uses. It is assurance. They are assured in God. I know past this storm is peace. I know past this storm is rest. So I will wait until the Lord gives me direction. I will wait for his strength. I will wait for him to lift me above. This circumstance, you got to see it. You got to see it. You just see the storm. You got to look past that. You just see the storm. You got to look past that. Don't look at your storm. Look at the peace of God because it's there. As it is in the natural, so is it in the